Hi, and welcome to the Tech Lockdown Daily Webcast, where we'll be discussing technology that will help us all during the lockdown period and beyond. My name is Zul, and I'll be your moderator for this session. Today, in our sixth webcast series, our journalist Syed will be chatting with Cisco's Director of Cybersecurity for Asia Pacific, Japan, and China, Kerry Singleton, and also CISO Senior Advisor, APJC Victor Kong. They'll be sharing their perspective and advice for both employer and employee on how to remain secure while working remotely. With that being said, I will now pass over to Said, who will now begin with today's discussion. Okay, thanks, So, Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us. I hope everyone's doing well, despite everything that's going, that's going on in the world right now. Uh, for today's webcast, we're joined by not one, but two execs from Cisco, Kerry Singleton and Victor Kyong. Thanks for joining us, gentlemen. Thanks, Said. Thank you. Good to be here. So as always, we'll start with uh, how things have been going for Cisco amidst all the lockdowns in many parts of the world. I mean, it's interesting to hear how different companies are coping in different ways. One thing I've noticed is that the major tech companies seem to be well prepared to deal with the business continuity part of things. I guess we, which isn't surprising at all. So have, how have operations been for Cisco in this region for the past few weeks? Yeah, so it's been an interesting, <clears throat> it's been an interesting actually few few months for Cisco um, going, you know, through what's been going on um, externally to us as well. But, um, you know, a, a, as you pointed out, Cisco's, Cisco's workforce today is already very, very mobile. Um, so working from home, working remotely is something that we're, we're very familiar with. I mean, at the scale that it's actually happened at has, has actually been a, a challenge, definitely. Um, so we've had to have, have we've had to look closely at the capacity um, around how we actually scale out from a percentage of the workforce to essentially um, the entire workforce in some regions. So it has it has been a challenge. Um, we have been prepared and we are ready for it. Um, it does have been a, a technology company, a technology provider who has um, solutions to help with these types of scenarios. So we've definitely been leveraging a lot of our own um, technology to enable, you know, different types of users, whether it's users who need to create some form of VPN connectivity back into the, the headquarters to access, you know, applications and other things like that, or whether it's been cloud native users who go off directly to um, cloud solutions um, for authentication and connectivity. And then, you know, we've got some great collaboration tools which allow us to communicate, host virtual meetings, host virtual teams, and collaborate with each other. So we've been in quite a good position. It hasn't been something that we expected. None of us expected what's what's happening. We've moved very much from a, a business continuity planning stage to a business execution stage. And all of our customers out there have had to move very, very quickly into execution as well. All right, great. How about you? Would you like to add anything to that, Victor? Because I know that you're both uh, based in Singapore right now. We, we've been, you know, we've been officially working from home for at least, I would say, three weeks, two to three weeks now. And, you know, we're incredibly blessed with uh, access to, you know, not just access, but we actually own the technology for, you know, one of the leading products for remote working. And it's it's quite gratifying to see, you know, like on new screens and, you know, vid video screens when people are, are showing it on screen when they're collaborating, you see the WebEx logo, the Cisco logo that, that is being used. So it's very gratifying. So we're channeling a lot of that kind of technology for our priority group, uh, healthcare, education, workers, etc., to make sure that they have the technology to deliver what they need to in, in this current time. So, so we're blessed and we're thankful that we can help all right so thanks for that the topic that we'll cover today will be on how companies can achieve a business as usual status at least as closely as possible by transitioning to remote workforce and how they can do so securely but beneath all that we've been hearing more and more about how cyber criminal activity has been escalating over the past few weeks so carrie is the cyber crime situation as bad as people make it up to be or is it part of the growing fear that people have in general. And how are cyber criminals leveraging what's going on in the world right now to attack businesses? Yeah, I think I think when you say working from home and you know normal business, I think there is nothing is really normal about what's going on. So for a lot of organizations, it's <laughs> right. been a right. you know it's been a pretty pretty big change, right? Um, everybody was right. used to um, a few weeks ago um, going into the office, getting on the train, getting in their car you know, congregating in the same place together of work, 
um, having face-to-face -face meetings, having lunch together, having dinner, dinner together, collaborating, you know, to a completely different mindset now where we're actually all sitting in front of a computer, sitting in front of a, 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 a audio like we are right now or, or a video camera um, and communicating in a, in a completely different way, collaborating in a completely different way. And, and back to your, your question, you know, earlier around the threats, the threats are different, um, you know, the threats of protecting a um, environment or an office where everybody goes to work is different to the threats of protecting a user connected um, remotely, whether it be at home or at an internet cafe or, or, or somewhere like that. You know, but unfortunately, you know, the, these types of um, pandemics and events, um, they, they bring out the best in a lot of companies and a lot of people. I mean, Cisco is doing an awful lot, you know, as Victor mentioned earlier about helping um, different types of businesses um, get online and get enabled, get connected and, and collaborate. But on the same account, again, it does bring out the worst and, and bad actors who, who are out there trying to exploit what's going on for financial gain. So, you know, some of the things that we're seeing out there, and I'll go through a few of them. Uh, you know, number one is, is websites. We're actually seeing a lot of websites hosting a lot of information about what's going on about COVID-19. And there are bad actors out there who are selling maps um, to graph and, and do a pictorial of, of what's happening out there with the pandemic. Um, but these, these maps contain malicious software. They contain malware embedded inside them. So if, if you as an unsuspecting user were to click on that, um, there is potential for it to be installing something malicious, some malware onto your computer, onto your machine. I mean, the other thing we're seeing as well is email. We're seeing a lot more um, phishing attacks, email attacks, where people are posing as um, a valid source, um, asking for information or trying to provide an update of, of information to um, different people out there. And the whole purpose of these is to try and get people to click or try and get people to open up something again that may be malicious embedded inside these emails. So that's also happening. Even looking outside of Cisco, I've actually received more phone spam in the past three or four weeks than I've received in a long time, whether it be through WhatsApp or text message or, or a phone call of somebody posing to be somebody who they're not requesting information from you. Another thing that we need to be mindful of around attacks is IoT. Um, a lot of us, when we're connecting from home, we've got IoT devices. You know, we could have we could have some sort of Google Assistant or Apple Assistant at home. We could have baby cameras on our network or some form of surveillance cameras. But we've got devices connected to our network which aren't like a traditional laptop or a computer hardened devices. They they run open operating systems. And these pose as a good attack point for attackers to actually connect onto and then try and get onto your devices or machines that are that are sitting securely inside your network. So we're seeing IoT attacks um, going up. We're also seeing users using a lot more VPN. So we're seeing uh, attackers attack vulnerabilities in VPN software on the client and VPN software at the head end. So back in the corporate office where, where people connect to. And, and the other thing we're seeing a lot of as well is um, username and password attacks. So if you're, you're, you're attack, uh, connecting online via a username and password, there is a potential there for that to get spammed or for that to get uh, monitored and picked up and, and somebody to steal your username and then access your data, access your information. I mean, if we, if we look at where um, other online applications have gone, you know, whether we're connecting to a government website or our own online banking portal, um, we're, we're, we're seeing those applications using multi-factor authentication. So not only username and password, but potentially also a token that's pushed down to your phone, whether it be through a text message or through a, a tick box sent through an application. So, you know, multi-factor authentication is, a, is another really important point around protecting our, our username and password and protecting our identity. But those are the, those are the main things that I'm, I'm, I'm seeing coming out of this type of new working environment.